Damn. I would have liked to see the Broncos get another shot to, to do something with the ball. What a catch by Lockett. Shit. Ah, oh, man, that sucks. That sucks. So Mike McDonald uh, coaches his first game, gets his first win. <clears throat> Excuse me. Tough one. Tough. Tough game. Uh, appreciate all your comments and watching. We'll hang out here until we hear the comments of uh, Sean Payne and maybe Bo Nix. Uh, DenverBroncos.com is pretty good with that stuff. And um, we'll just be like holding the phone up sort of deal. But. Oh, man. Gutsy play. Thank you, DMAC. Very fun and entertaining. KUWT for life. Thank you, Andon. Love you, pal. You're the best. Well, I thank Journey Spice. Journey Spice is incredible. They're a tremendous sponsor of ours. And you can save 20% using the code 20touchdown at Amazon.com. Uh, couldn't be a worse weekend in Colorado football. Well, CSU won. They beat UNC. Well, sure, big UNC fan, I guess. Uh, Miners gave us nothing today. We were terrible all day inside. Same crap. Same crap. 21's a rook played okay. I, I can't even blame. That was one hell of a throw and a one-hand catch by Lockett. It's, it's kind of tough to be upset with him about that. One score game. Uh, I said 23 20 Seattle. It ended up 26 20 Seattle. So I said 41. What did I say? I think I said 41 27 Nebraska. That was 28 to 10, 18 points. So I need to be patting myself on the back on that one. But here we are live. And so uh, let's hang out for a little bit and get your thoughts about what you saw. The Broncos lose to the Seahawks 26 to 20 in a game that was pretty terrible offensively for the Broncos. Uh, you know, they got a they they got a touchdown late in the game from Bo Nix, which was cool, uh, but all in all, it was it was bad. There's no other way to put it. Offensively, it was bad. the The Broncos' defense played tough for good chunks of the game, but they bent even just a little bit. With two safeties in the first half, it was a unusual sort of affair for the Broncos. Um, I mean, that's not a typical sort of deal. But the end result is the Broncos. Go to 0-1. Some numbers on the day. Bo Nix was 26 of 42 for 138 yards. Geno Smith, 18 of 25 for 171. Two sacks on each guy and two interceptions for Bo Nix. Quarterback rating of 47.5. Geno Smith, 87.2. But the Broncos couldn't really run the ball. Not really. 25 carries for 99 yards doesn't sound bad. But everything they, they got number-wise was later in the game. Uh, the Broncos were three and out almost in every single possession. And yeah, they hung in there to get a drive late. And then when you needed a defensive stop, you just couldn't quite do it. Well, you just couldn't quite do it. But even if they got the ball back, no saying that they would have gone down. It would have been nice to see that. But the Broncos more or less had a game that you would expect a rookie quarterback to have. That being said, it wasn't like Seattle was impressive. And the defense, the challenge against Pittsburgh defense will be much stronger next week. As Pittsburgh proved today by really hammering defensively Atlanta and their win as Justin Fields gets the W as the quarterback. But it was on the back of 
six field goals, and a great defensive performance by the Steelers. So things get more challenging defensively next week when the Steelers are here. Other than that, in terms of what stood out for the Broncos, Josh Reynolds with five catches for 45 yards. Cortland Sutton, four for 38. Uh, Devon Bailey, eight catches for but 39 yards. So he really didn't do much with the ball. He got a couple of uh, sacks from Jonathan Cooper on the day. Um, but again, there's just nothing they could do to get going at all. DK Metcalf, three catches for 29 yards. Uh, Lockett, six catches for 77, including that huge one at the very end. So this Broncos team gets, um, listen, man, I, I more or less this game, I, I, I didn't expect Bo Lock to sort of, <laughs> Bo Lock, Bo Nix to play that poorly, but there were a couple of drops. He showed more aggression a little bit later on. I think he's going to be all right. The Broncos couldn't get any yards after catch in this game either. They just couldn't do anything special. And the only reason they were in the game is they got an interception early from Alex Singleton that put them in scoring position immediately. They got four points off two safeties, which was huge. And they had relatively, they were in, they were a couple of times in field goal range when they got the ball in the first place, driving the ball. They had one good drive there at the end that resulted in Bo Nix rushing for a touchdown. Other than that, it was um, a whole lot of nothing on offense. And eventually the defense sort of petered out. Geno Smith wasn't great, but they had enough variety in their game um, to put up enough points in the second half. Uh, the Broncos were leading at halftime, so it was really a tale of two halves and much more productive, obviously, for the Seahawks scoring uh, 17 points in the second half. So there you go. Um, you're on to the next. And I, I, I think the concept of you're expecting things to be magical for Bo Nix overnight uh, goes out the window. The first one's in the bank. It wasn't great. Um, it wasn't exactly great debuts for Jaden Daniels or for Caleb Williams, even though Caleb Williams team did get a win, but his defense was pretty extraordinary, which is amazing because the bears defensively have been so bad. Jaden Daniels, he got whacked. They got killed. So um, those are your rookie quarterbacks, y'all. That's what you got today. Meanwhile, it's a weird week where the Patriots win in Cincinnati. Okay. Uh, that was strange. Um, you had some other just kind of unusual things that were going on in terms of the NFL. Not unusual that the, the Chargers win. They beat the um, uh, they they beat the Raiders. That's not a surprise by by any stretch. Uh, but you did have uh, the Steelers manhandle the Falcons. You did have the Bills beat the Cardinals. Bears did win, like I said. Texans is a close one over the Colts. Dolphins really great game over the Jags. Uh, the Saints clown hammered the Panthers, Vikings over the Giants, and yada, yada, yada. So there you go. Broncos lose 26-20 in the Bo Knicks era has begun. So let's get to your thoughts here in this post game and um, see what it's all about. Okay, and we'll hang out for a little bit. I do want to see. be nice to be able to stay until Sean Payton talks. Just keep an eye on that uh, as that comes around. So I'll take your comments until we see Sean Payton talking. Uh, this team makes everything look hard. It's just the same boring crap we've seen from years. By the way, thank you to everybody watching. This is a remarkable amount of folks who are watching right now. So I do want to encourage you to like and subscribe if at all possible. It would really help. Thank you for tuning in. We appreciate it. Um, needed to for between the tackles more. Need to run, I think you mean to say. Welcome to the NFL moment. Hopefully he can build on it. Uh, honestly, about what I expected, I'm in a wait and see mode as the weeks go on. Yeah, of course. Uh, uh, next week is going to be tough against that defense. And there'll be a lot of Steeler fans in the crowd. No doubt about it. Great game plan having a rookie throw 43 times on the road at Seattle. First game for a rookie quarterback. Uh, they couldn't run the ball. 
So whether you were, I mean, whatever you want to say about it, they just they just could not run the ball. So I'm I'm not exactly sure how many time and they were losing by 13 points um, early in the fourth quarter. So I I guess I'm unclear how many times you wanted them to run. They they had 25 uh, rushing attempts for 99 yards. So yeah, I mean, okay. <laughs> Again, I'm I'm not exactly sure what you wanted once they were trailing, and it was like the, the, there weren't weren't a lot of plays to run the ball. There were three and outs all over the place. Appreciate you, DMac. Thanks for providing an outlet for the fans. You got it. It's all about you guys, no doubt. False start on the national anthem singer. Gotta fill me out on that one. Don't know what you're talking about. If we could have jumped ahead early and taken advantage of the early turnovers, Bo wouldn't have had to be aggressive, and I think he would have settled down. Defense looked good. The Broncos did give away 15 virtual points, meaning they were three times in touchdown scoring position, and once was an interception at the one-yard line. That did turn out to be a uh, safety. And then there were two other times they were uh, in the red zone where they had to settle for field goals and just gave away points. So they they did give away 15 points. And then you could say, okay, maybe it wasn't 15, maybe it was 13, maybe it was 12, maybe it was six, but whatever. There were, there were points on the board for them to get, uh, and they lost by six. So they, they did lose by the difference of not cashing in on the opportunities that were available to them. So that is the case. That did happen. Uh, let's see here. We need a dynamic playmaker. Travis Hunter, any dynamic offensive player is needed for Bo to succeed. He has no deep arm strength. We also have a running back problem. Okay. A lot of problems. Uh, when will, when we will be 0 and 6? Well, by that logic, after six games. Bo will be a grizzled vet when they finally fill the team around him. Yeah. Yeah, that's going to take some time. And he needs his reps. He needs his experience. That's what it's going to be. Are we giving excuses to Bo? Really? Sure. Uh, Javante did not look good. Javante Williams, eight carries for 23 yards, 2.9 per. Uh, didn't look anything special. He had one catch for zero yards on two targets. Nothing special, that's for sure. Solid special teams play. The special teams was outstanding. Special, special teams was amazing. They downed the ball at the half yard line. They uh, uh, Will Lutz was perfect on his kicks. Um, no, special teams was great. No, no issues with special teams whatsoever. It's great, great to say. Uh, thoughts on the O line? Um, hard to say. Oh, here is Sean Payton. Here we go. Let's see what he's got to say here. Uh, we had some opportunities early. We get the early turnover. You know, we end up okay, settling for a field goal. Um, so I'm sure there'll be a lot we have to coach coach up after looking at the tape. Um, any questions? Did you think uh, Did you think Bo was a little jittery early, and then finally no. into a no? I mean, I didn't. I thought. Um, he seemed calm, poised. Uh, I thought that part of it, you know, he was, I think, you know, I felt like he was very comfortable and ready. Do you have, how do you see him sort of handle the adversity that he has faced? And, and how do you yeah, see look, I think this, I think, I don't know how many balls we dropped. Um, and so I've said this before, you know, for any quarterback playing, you know, we, we've got to be more effective running the football. You know, I, we'll see the rushing. To, if you take away, his scrambling yards, I think we're like somewhere 60 yards rushing to their 140. So not not nearly good enough. You see that last drive in which he scored a touchdown, giving him some confidence moving forward. I think, listen, I think part of being a young player is, you know, he, he's, a, he's a fairly confident, I don't want to say kid, but um, yeah, I, I felt the whole time he was he was into it, competing. Um, we just... We just got to be better around them. And, and that's my impressions from from just watching it without looking at the tape. When you look at the run totals as part of it, like you said, you just weren't very good at it. Because you obviously didn't want to throw Listen, I, there's always that 
balance of, man, we're attempting to, and then it's hard to keep, you know, and so whether it was base personnel, we're going to look at the tape and we're going to, we're going to say this and that, but we, we got to evaluate us as coaches. We got to evaluate the run plan and, and why it wasn't as effective as we'd like. I mean, it's going to be hard to play quarterback period. If that's the best we can do running the ball. A lot of, a lot of tempo, you, you know, a lot of at the line, maybe shift, you know, so they kind of change from huddle to more tempo, um, and, you know, hit us with some gun runs. Um, look like some check with me plays at the line. Uh, Sean, oh, Sean uh, how's Garibald's ankle? Seemed like he was trying to get back in it. Yeah, I think he's going to be fine. He hit an MRI. Um, I think the evaluation was fine. I think he's he's got a bruise. Just curious, if, like 40 attempts, did you want that coming in? No, or? no. That's a byproduct a lot of times of, you know, you get into the fourth quarter and heck no. Um, no. Some of the empty and four wide, was that an effort to hit Bowie? And there's just oddball looks. You're trying to find completions. Sometimes we're in like a heavy personnel trying to get a certain matchup. Um, a lot of times it's, it's something you see defensively that, that you want to get to. Um, I thought, listen, I, I thought he was into it. Uh, I never felt like um, it was too big or confusing. Uh, he was sharp and... Uh, I thought he actually extended some plays with his feet. And, and again, um, we'll look at the tape, but um, we have to be better around him. Did the defense wear down? You know, you weren't um, in the second half. Yeah, I don't know. Uh, uh, that's a good question. It's a fair question. You know, the time of possession, um, you know, certainly we would have liked to have had a drive to start the second half. We were three and out, and then I think we gave up a touchdown on that next drive. So it's, the, the momentum shifted there early in the third quarter. And... Uh, yeah, we, we struggled at that point. It took a while to get it back. When you have the early, um, you know, settle for a field goal a couple of times in the red zone, how much can that take the wind out of you? you said well, I mean, in the back of everyone's mind when that happens, like we had the early turnover and, you know, we're in a pretty good position. We've got a, a good play, the play we want. I think we have a false start. Correct. First down or after there's a, there's a first and goal after I think a run or two runs and it just can't happen. John, you've seen a lot of football, but you have two safeties in the first half, plus you get them off the pile. I guess how frustrating to have those, you know, I guess. Yeah, not enough, not enough came of it. Now the safeties are the safeties and the interesting thing with the safeties are that I don't know, we were able to catch the ball obviously and, you know, plus eight, Eight, you know, you gives yourself a chance of possibly returning it. Um, I would say it's not as penalizing maybe as in the in the past because you had to hang, you know, you, you have hang time and all of that. Um, but th it is what it is. But yeah, the muff punt, um, the interception. Um, you know, we got we got to we got to we got to be better. Then I got to be better. You know, we we uh, the thing that was frustrating is the the down and distance efficiency for us offensively on first or second down. Um, there were too many third down and eight or eight or more. Why do you say you have to be? Why do you say you have? Well, to just hey, anytime we have a plan like that and, and we don't we don't execute or we don't run the ball as well, then you got to look at why. That's why. You had a lot of possessions, but I think seven, three and outs. How, how difficult is it to get into a rhythm when you don't generate that first? Yeah, um, I, I think it's very difficult. You know, and it, 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 you know, generally, if you're playing good offense, you're making a lot of times you're making first downs on first or second down. You know, so there's like a CFL number we look at. Yeah, you know, how are you doing? How are you doing on first and second down converting first downs? And obviously, I, I don't. That would have been minute today, my guess. Good fourth and one from your own 39 at the early early in the fourth quarter. Did you think about going for it there? And why did you ultimately decide to punt? Yeah, the, look, I, I look time wise I felt we were we were plenty of time. Um but yeah, I I, I did think about it. How did you think you did sort of predicting what a first year staff was gonna do against you? Say it again. I'm just wondering how, how you felt how you did predicting what they might do 
Um, I think it was, we didn't get as much man-to-man -man on defense. We had a little bit more fire zone coverage, I think, offensively. Um, in the second half, you know, they got into some no huddle shift in motion, you know, cut, you know, package plays that, that we didn't play as well. Um, yeah, but we got the base front, like we thought the nickel, like we thought, um, yeah. Um, and, and again, it's, there is that difference in personnel here than maybe Woody had. And, you know, certainly Mike smart enough to to take and try to do the things that suit this team. You have, you know, a lot of experience evaluating quarterbacks. Sometimes you can be really critical. It seems like with Bo, maybe you're adding the context first game, maybe try. I, listen, like I said, I will watch the tape, but um, he gave us a chance. You, you know, I mean, our protection was average at best. Um, and... I just think, uh, and I believe this, that we have to, you know, at one point in the game, I came to the, the bench and talked to the receivers and said, Let, you know, let's go. You know, I don't, I don't I don't know how many drops we had, but, man, let's help this guy. Um, so, any more? All right, thanks. All right. Well, there's Sean Payton. I don't know. I thought I thought that was pretty honest about everything. I don't really have any beefs with Sean Payton. You know, the receivers needed to catch more balls. True. Uh, you needed to make a guy miss. They couldn't make anybody miss. Bo Nix needed to be a little bit better, but he's a rookie. You got to help him out a little bit. We'll see if they uh, bring Bo Nix, Bobot, up onto the uh, stadium, up into the podium. Uh, Washington with Jaden Daniels lost, and honestly, Caleb didn't look too good with the Bears. I mean, yes, does Bo Nix have 61 career starts, but that don't equate to the NFL, and he did solid, in my opinion. Okay, well, there's a... Does P.J. Locke start at safety the whole season? Oh, I, I think um, positions like safety, P.J. Locke, yeah, I think all of that is up for conversation. I don't think there's... I don't think there's many players on this team uh, locked down in 10. Um, wide receivers with no speed. There is a lot of uh, possession wide receivers. You're not wrong about that. You're not wrong about that. Who cares? These things are worthless. I coach great. They just played bad. <laughs> you talk about Sean Payton, what he's saying. Is that the impression that you got? I'm going to try to make this a little bit more orangey. There you go. That's better. Uh, let's see here. Let's see what else you got. Comments. <laughs> uh, I'm getting a funny, uh, a funny text from a muggle. One of the muggles sending me a funny text. Can't read that on the air though. Uh, shut up, Troy Rank. Why? Why are you telling Troy to shut up? Uh, tough place on the road. Hard to scheme against the team. Uh, with new coaches, early rookie struggles, but I think things will get a lot better sooner than later. Go Broncos. Losing to the shitty sea chickens is the bottom. Rome was not built in one day, says Daniel Flores. Uh, boring. Looked like the same Sean offense. Whew. Okay. All right. Reminder, um, we're on at 8 o'clock with Vic Lombardi and Mike Sanford for Altitude After Dark. Uh, let's see here. Broncos run game reminiscent of last night's Buffs game, to be honest. Plus, felt like every play call was underneath and short. Three more weeks. Thanks for bringing us the presser, D. You're welcome. You're welcome. I'm hanging in. By the way, I'm just following the um, Broncos on Twitter. And for somebody who says I need some uh, technical help, uh, you're right. Okay, Bo Nix at the podium. Let's see what he's got to say. We can get you in third and long, third and um, just tough situation. So um, overall, I think, you know, as 
as poorly as we did, I think we gave ourselves a chance to win. There at the end, our, our uh, special teams and defense played incredible. They uh, really kept us in the game and gave us hope. Um, they battled. Uh, but I think, you know, overall, you, you like to compete of our team. You like to look of, uh, you know, we never quit. We, we battled. It could have got out of hand, but but it didn't. And, and we were, um, you know, a, a possession away from having a chance, essentially. So, um, you know, obviously not the original results you want, but I feel like, uh, you know, we're going to have a confident group and we're going to bounce back from it and um, con continue to compete. We saw from you is that you weren't as accurate today. It calls you behind guys like we're so used to seeing. That. Was that a reflection of the pressure, or something they were doing first game for you? Well, we got to go back and look at the film. Um, obviously, if balls are on the ground, um, you got to evaluate, you know, how you can change it. But um, sometimes that's, that's part of the game. Uh, you know, they play defense too. They try to get to the ball. And, um, you know, obviously uh, we didn't hit them all. So that's what we're going to continue to try to do is go out there and, and hit them all. Although everybody talks about the 12s and the crowd noise, how was the atmosphere? How did you find that? Uh, I, thought, I thought we handled it really well. I think there was one down in the red zone that was, uh, you know, start of a drive after a turnover that um you know it was unfortunate it, stuff like that can't happen but we bounced back got a field goal and didn't let it bother us the rest of the game the uh the first half when you had the uh, ball at the 20 to start and ball at the nine only came away with field goals I feel like that's where maybe the game got away from here or why you ended up on the short end no we were winning going into halftime and we had a chance there at the end what were your emotions of the day <clears throat> Uh, you know, um, it was a challenge. It was uh, it was a tough day. It was, uh, you know, they didn't make it easy on us, that's for sure. Um, but like I said, we competed. We went down and scored there at the end um, and, and gave ourselves a chance to win. And we were, you know, an, an, an inch away on a, you know, almost batted ball that Riley Moss made an incredible play on that they just, you know, made made a better play. So it's um, it's tough. You got to give them credit. But um, we battled and, and we continued to fought. And that's, you know, those are the emotions of today that we got a, a competitive team. We got a team that's not going to quit. Um, and we're going to put everything on the line. And no matter if it's, you know, ugly start, um, we're going to continue to, to find ways to finish. I guess, I mean, personally, you said earlier in the week, you only did your, one mm -hmm. NFL, your first start once. I mean, how, how were you through the morning? Yeah, well, uh, yeah, you only get it once. And, um, Game went back and forth, and so, you know, overall, got to continue to um, find ways to be efficient and um, get first downs, and not uh, stay in first, second, third down off the field. You know, keep kept getting three and out. So, um, you know, things to learn from for sure, um, but they're not all perfect. Were you nervous? <laughs> uh, no, I felt confident going in the game. Uh, I thought we, you know, continued to battle. But on the field, how different was this from the preseason games? Was the speed much different, or was it about what you expected? It was different. They, uh, you know, they got after us. Um, you know, a lot, a lot of the game, uh, we were able to move the ball there at the end. Um, but yeah, I thought they had good team speed. They rallied to the football. They made open field tackles, and that's usually the sign of a good defense. And so, um, hats off to them. In the first half, from the uh, you had the third and nine from the twenty one, I think, through to Cortland. Safety came over and get it. Explain what happened there. Yeah, uh, that was I felt like you know a bad decision. We had, had points, um, but you know they got the ball into one. We got safety. You know after that, so our defense bailed us out. Last one for both. Oh, what's your process here when you watch film in terms of kind of figuring out what things you can correct immediately versus what are longer term things you're going to have to work on this year. Well, I think that's a loaded question. We got to watch the film, see what it says. Um, you know, find the areas to get improve on. I I don't think we were far off, um, but you know, there's always always going to be. Even if we had won that game, you're going to go in there and correct it the same way. So, find ways to um, run plays as efficient as possible and stay out of third and longs. And um, you know, overall, find ways to to get a win um, in these tough games. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Well, there you go. Um, I'm not sure if somebody else is going to come to the podium or not. I don't know. They might bring Alex Singleton. Who knows? But um, we'll stay on here for a few more moments. Take some of your responses. A reminder tonight, we're on at 8 o'clock, altitude after dark. 
That is locked in for Thursdays and Sundays. I believe Rob Tregilio and Mike Sanford will be commandeering things on Mondays. So, uh, so there's that. Okay, let's see what you've got to say here. Uh, DMAC and man of the people. Oh, God, thank you. No doubt about that. I uh, need a better line to have better running backs. Don't get down, Bo. You'll get it. Yeah, man. I mean, what are you going to do? Give up after one game? No, yeah, wasn't the greatest, but, you know, you don't certainly don't give up. Bo leave? Yeah, I think so. Encouraging. Sure. It's sad that Denver fans want to burn this guy and hang the coach after one game. Denver has always had some of the worst fans in sports. <laughs> oh, my God. DMAC, no dumb question. Easier to win and take credit as being a quarterback guru with Drew Brees or without? Uh, yeah, of course. Of course. Of course, man. Of course, of course, of course. Bo Nix leading the team in rushing yards. That should not happen. Broncos need better running backs and wide receivers. I mean, I guess it's discouraging to hear that Sean Payton went over to the wide receivers and was like, hey, let's go. Come on, catch the ball. Uh, Bo is going to work his ass off. No doubt about that. No doubts about that. Rookie growing pains, it's going to be fine. I never watched a lot of Saints games. As Sean Payne always called so many plays at or behind the line of scrimmage. It's a good question. I'm not sure. It did feel like they were just having the hardest time getting the ball down the field. I'm not going to uh, doubt you on that. Uh, thanks, D-Mac. I got to go make dinner. Go make dinner. Appreciate you watching when you can. Uh, this can be audio. There could be an audio element of this too, you know? Just listen as you make dinner if you want. Clown hammered is a great term that should be used more often. Thanks for bringing it back. I love clown hammered. Uh, let's see. No Sean Payton had wide receivers that could take the top off in New Orleans. It's not here. Nick's better than the 13 Broncos quarterbacks before him. They average more rushing yards than passing yards. 3.3 for pass, 4.0 per rush. Yeah, that sucks. Who you got tonight, DMAC? Well, if we're uh, just having friendly conversation, not for wagering purposes, I will take the Lions at home against the Rams. But great game. Great game. So looking forward to that for sure. I expected the Broncos to win, but the lack of a run game and the loss of commitment to it were disappointing. Do you think Sean Payton is holding back some of his playbook to get Bo acclimated? Um, I, I think there's just things that haven't been absorbed as fully as possible. I don't think he's holding back per se as much as, you know, there'll be, there'll be better and more development as time goes. Uh, Bo's timing was definitely slow. Not sure if he's just his first game jitters, but you hope to see better composure at home next week. Yeah, of course. Of course. D should fare better against fields next week. Oh, man. Well, listen, man, you know how I feel about Fields. I'm a big Justin Fields fan, but come on now, man. We want we want Russ. I want Russ. That's for sure. Uh, I didn't expect the Broncos to win, but the lack of a run game and loss of commitment to it was disappointing. They were down, man. That's the way it goes when you're down. The other team will let you run the ball all day when you're losing by 13 points. You got to... You got to go. Uh, you're right about paying a corner who makes zero impact. A couple of PIs. Uh, you know, Sertan was fine. It's it's just that it's so easy to avoid uh, one guy like that. I mean, one guy just uh, I, a quarterback has the ball in his hands on every offensive play. A cornerback, if he's just incredible, they just they just won't bother with you. And you're you know, you're not going to be as effective unless you get another guy who's that incredible. And then you see how it goes. You got to play a lot of zone defense out there, which makes the individual corner. And you can play perfect defense as they played. And it's a one hand catch by Lockett on a perfect pass by Geno Smith. So way it goes. Jesus, my man, agree. Uh, those weren't gifted. They were taken. Last scoring drive by Knicks was very encouraging. I agree. Oh, Mississippi State. Goodness. Guys lost my Sun Devils last night. What happened? I'm sorry. 
PS2 is going to be Aeneas Williams. Lots of losing, no playoffs, and probably a Hall of Famer. <laughs> Gotta love Sertan's business decision on the TD run that got called back. Embarrassing. Ooh, I didn't even notice that. Uh, yeah, I don't think that's the best part of Sertan's game. Takes dumb coaching to have dumb fans. I watched the Steelers defense today. They are for real. They are for real. That game could even be uglier than today. Uh, what is ridiculous? That defense is tough. You mean the play he was held on? I, I, I don't recall it. I, I don't remember it. I'll go back and watch it. I wasn't watching Sertan on that play. I don't have anything uh, bad to say. Uh, I loved all the orange in the stands. Yeah, Broncos fans do great. Broncos fans always do great at that department. Looks like all we got is Sean and Bo at the podium. I saw Rod Mackey talk to Singleton one-on-one, -on -one, so okay. Uh, Bowles got hurt, too. Whoops, sorry. Bowles hurt, too. Yes, he was. And Sean said that he thought he'd be okay. Let's hope so. Would love to see Sean call some more running plays for Bo. Looked like he got more confidence when he was on the move. Uh, let's see here. Yes. Hat tip to your Sun Devils last night. Yes. I was surprised by that. And they they gave up that onside kick late. You guys were right back in the game. Yes, PS2 was held on that play. He still had time to make some sort of effort. Not here to, to rag on PS2. Uh, Seattle's defense was good. Okay. I thought it was a new young roster that has size, speed, and lots of gas in the tank. All right. All right, all right, all right, all right. Uh, here because football night in America is just awful now. <laughs> is it? Why is it bad? I don't know if it's bad. Is it bad? I have no idea why it's bad. Uh, all right. I'm going back a little bit. I love your comments. I'm so grateful everybody is watching. We've got um, the, on this platform for this show, the platforms are just my Facebook, uh, Twitter, and my Twitter, and my YouTube. And the fact that we have 3,500 folks watching us right now, combined on all three platforms, mostly on Twitter, um, is, is incredibly rewarding. So thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Really appreciate it. Uh, Sertan is the least of my worries. No production from tight ends today. Tight ends today. Let's see. Let's see the tight ends today. Tight ends today for the Broncos. Dulcich, two catches for 12 yards. Troutman, one target, no catches. And that was it. So you had four targets at the tight ends today. Four. Um, Kroll was a healthy scratch. Uh, you did play. Um, Michael Burton did play, as did. Um, oh, my God. I'm forgetting all right the tight end. Anyways, he didn't do anything. We got the final play totals in a little bit. But yeah, tight ends did nothing today. You're right. Uh, tight ends for... God, what is Charbonnet? He's a running back, right? Yeah, running back. Uh, let's see. Noah Fant had two catches for 11 yards. And that was it. So it was not a big tight end game for either team today. Tight ends were not a factor at all. All right, let's see here. Not a drop of speed to take the top off. We are lacking elite talent, skilled positions, all of them. Yeah, and, and they cannot. Nobody was getting away from their initial person who was guarding them. The, the, the yards after catch was like, like non-existent. Troutman recovered that fumble. Oh, okay. There you go. Troutman. Nate Adkins is the other tight end. Got it. So Troutman did do something. Okay. Well, there you go. He fell on a ball. Good. Uh, seven, three and outs. Terrible. And let's see. The Broncos are lucky they weren't playing in Florida today. Their D players would have been more gassed. 
yeah, that's going to suck. They're certainly going to lose in week three to Tampa. Um, that always blows playing in Florida for the Broncos in September. It's always warm. It always sucks. They always lose. Um, I'm counting that as a loss. I would never count that as a win. So, okay, bounce back next week against the Steelers. The best that you can. I think this was going to be a brutally tough game for the Broncos to win. I predicted they would lose, and they did. I thought they would lose 23-20. They lost 26-20. I predicted that the uh, Buffs would lose by, what, I 14. They lost by 18. Uh, that was close. Uh, let's see here. Yeah, Buccaneers beat the Commanders 37 to 20. That was in Tampa. Baker Mayfield 24 to 30 for 289, four touchdowns. Shit. That's a good day, man. That is one one sack, no interceptions. Uh Rashad White had 15 carries. Sorry, what are we receiving? Chris Godwin had eight catches. Uh, Rashad White had six. Mike Evans had five. 289 receiving yards, 112 rushing yards. Goodness gracious. Yeah, they're going to lose to Tampa. <laughs> Sorry. So you got to get a win against the uh, against the Steelers at home, right? Bo Nix is fine. Go Broncos. Uh, 44 past 25 runs. Yeah, and that well, that got out of balance because they were just trailing in the end. Uh, silver linings today. Special teams was extraordinary. Defense played good for the most part. Um, and Bo Nix showed a little heart and courage at the end of the game. They didn't just quit. There you go. Uh, is there any update on Bulls? Uh, uh, Sean Payton said that it's an ankle. And did not think it was going to be that serious. Nine and six. Nine to six next week. That's a low scoring game. Okay. You guys are the best. And I hate signing off when we have the most viewers that we've had. That's unfortunately sometimes the way this goes. But again, uh, thank you for watching the post game show. Um, back on at eight o'clock with Vic Lombardi and Mike Sanford to get their takes on everything for Altitude After Dark. So. Four hours on this pod. We appreciate it. Liking and subscribing helps a lot. So please do that. If you're new to this, we have great content for you up and down this channel on the Buffs and the Broncos, as well as all the Denver sports teams, plus cool other stuff like Peter's Painting Podcast. And, oh, you'll you'll discover it for yourself. And so if you're on Twitter, go check out the YouTube channel. I think you'll really, really enjoy it. And if you're on YouTube, make sure that you like and subscribe. But yeah, go check out the YouTube channel if you're just watching this on Twitter. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. DMAC on YouTube. Kill you with truth. Search for it. You'll find it. Subscribe. Um, that would really help. Thank you to Journey Spice. Thank you to everybody. Got a little production work here to do to get ready for the show at 8 o'clock. So I will see you then.